Alex Wade, BCBamerica.com here. Today we've got the new Samsung Galaxy Active Watch 2, or maybe it's just Active uh, Watch 2, Active, Active Watch. Uh, it's a lot of words, so I'm just gonna go with Active 2 because that's what everyone's really gonna call it. Uh, and I'm gonna put it through its paces from a sports, fitness kind of technology standpoint and not so much from like a general usage standpoint. There are endless videos out there on YouTube that'll cover that. I'm gonna talk about sports, that's what I do. I'm gonna talk about things like, is the new heart rate sensor better? Is GPS improved? Uh, are the UI, is all the apps better from a sports and fitness standpoint? Has anything changed there? It's only been like six or seven months since the last version came out. So I'm gonna talk all about that. But before I do that, I wanna briefly touch on the digital bezel, mostly because I'm seeing a lot of people do it wrong. Now the catch is a lot of people don't realize it's actually not enabled by default. Uh, so I'm gonna show you how to enable that really quick. Simply swipe down first, click the little uh, settings icon there, go down to advanced. And then within advanced, you will see touch bezel. In my case, I've turned it on. Obviously I could turn it off right there. And that's really how you get that touch bezel working. Uh, I think, you know, for the most part, it works fairly well, actually, better than I thought it would, and a heck of a lot better once you turn it on than it did without it on. Now let's go ahead and talk about that new optical heart rate sensor. This is probably the biggest, not probably, this is the biggest uh, exterior or difference between these two watches from a hardware standpoint, uh, because if you look from the top down, they look virtually identical. Uh, and when you turn them on here, you'll notice they're still pretty similar uh, in terms of like display brightness and stuff like that. Obviously I have different watch faces on them right now, but it's when you turn them over that things are holy cow different. Uh, in the case here, the sensor looks dramatically different. They've consolidated the LEDs down into kind of a single pod in the middle there versus on this side here, you had four LEDs there. And you remember in the past, the accuracy of the Active One was not super hot. And by super hot, I mean, it was basically dumpster fire status. Uh, they improved GPS in the Active Watch compared to past Samsung watches, but not so much the heart rate sensor. It was kind of useless. Now, if you're going to compare this to the Apple Watch, either Series 4 or Series 5, because the optical heart rate sensors are identical between the two of them, you'll notice that they're pretty darn similar. Uh, so who knows why? I mean, maybe that they're doing this because there's reasons from ECG standpoint that these particular designs need to be similar, but given that other ECG watches like the Withings watch don't look anything like that, eh, there's probably a more simplistic explanation for that. Uh, still, it'll be interesting to see whether or not this proves itself as more accurate once it's out on the road. As in the case of the Apple Watch, generally speaking, it is a very accurate optical heart rate sensor, uh, though there are some quirks with Series 5, but uh, overall, though, it's definitely a better design than what Samsung seemed to have in the past. Now, before we get to that, though, let's briefly talk about some of the different health widgets. Uh, so things that are accessible on the watch itself. So you can go ahead and track like activities and stuff like that. So to access those, make sure your display is on. Simply swipe to the right right there, and you can go ahead and see kind of your activity overview for the day. You can tap that, and you can look at activity. You can look at workout. In my case, even though I've already done my run, it won't show up here because I've used Endomondo. Uh, so I won't see that workout time in there, unfortunately. Uh, you can see my move hourly goals are listed there. Uh, that seems like it might be undercutting things a little bit, but that is what it is, and sort of the overview for the week itself. Uh, I can go ahead and then back out and swipe to the right. And this is where we go ahead and start an activity and I can add uh, activities to kind of this little quick start menu there. This is my heart rate, uh, my current heart rate. In this case, it's trying to search for it, which is the blinking. Uh, obviously it's on the table, so it's probably not succeed there. I can measure it right there and I can look at the min and max values of my heart rate over the course of the week. Swiping through here, kind of a bit of a non-sport thing. I've got the weather, uh, though today it was very much a sport thing. I've got my calendar, and a Mondo widget is on there, so I can see my last run right there and quick start a workout. Sleep functionality. Uh, in this case, this is actually relatively close to what my actual sleep time was last night. Uh, I, I woke up a little bit later that, maybe about 15, 20 minutes, uh, but I believe that's actually when the watch died. Uh, even though when I went to bed, it's still 22 hours of battery life left. Uh, when I woke up some, you know, four hours later, it was dead. So that's kind of a bit of a bummer. So. There's that there, and I can add widgets into this role here. Uh, again, kind of all the same widgets that you have seen in the past. A lot of breakouts for sport and fitness ones are more kind of fitness ones there. For example, you can add floors climbed, uh, your exercise for the day, food, health summary, leaderboard, multi-workout. Uh, there's caffeine as well in there. I mean, lots and lots of options. Okay, and before we head outside, I just wanna give a quick cautionary note on all the permissions and all the times you have to approve something on this watch in order to actually use it from a sport and fitness standpoint. 
Uh, this morning, before my run, I counted no less than five times that I had approved permissions for this watch to access GPS, to access GPS again, to access my location yet again, to go ahead and access my heart rate sensors, uh, and to access my data on Samsung Health, which is kind of nuts. It's just way too many layers, and most of the time, it's buried way deep down the menus. So just be aware of that, and double check before you press the Start button on your workout that you actually do have GPS, you do have heart rate, all that kind of stuff. With that warning out of the way, let's go for a run. Okay, so here we are outside. It's all the things you don't want it to be when you go for a run. It's windy, it's cold, it's raining, it's wet. It's just not ideal. Um, but I got four watches with me here. I've got the uh, Active 2 right there. On this wrist over here, I have the Apple Watch Series 5. And I'll be hand holding here the 945 from Garmin and the Polar Vantage V. Uh, and then I've got a chest strap on right here, the HRM Dual, and then on this upper arm right there, uh, underneath my shirt, I have the Polar OH1 heart rate strap. Uh, so that's our heart rate sensor to go ahead and measure as well. So I've got lots of sensors paired up. Uh, they'll go ahead and record everything. And I'll get everything all started here. Now, in the case of the Active 2, I'm gonna use the Endomondo app uh, because that's really the only app that allows me to get the full fidelity of the data out of it. So with all that said, I'm gonna go ahead and get everything started and we'll get a cook and I'll catch up in the park somewhere. Um... Okay, so I'm gonna apologize right now for any one that's gonna get in the lens on this run. That's gonna be a fact of life today. So sorry if those little dots on there. Um, initial impressions, I'm about a mile into the park at this point and uh, it's not so hot. Like, heart rate accuracy, it goes in steps. So we'll be sitting there like 132 beats per minute, and then five seconds later, we'll go boom, 148, and then I'll show it again, and the same thing the next time I see it. So it'll be interesting to see what the recorded data looks like, but the on-display data is very latent. Uh, not like completely useless, but definitely not good. From a GPS pace standpoint, it's just a roll of dice. Like right now I look 658, but for the first two seconds, second and a half, it shows 730. So again, very late and like the refresh rate is odd or out of whack or whatever. Look again, 633 right now, actual pace, 720, 708, 720. So not super hot. Now, if you're finding this video interesting or useful or anything, uh, we just want to thank you for running out in this current tap, craptastic conditions here. Go ahead and hit that like button down at the bottom there. It really helps the video and the channel quite a bit. Now, we're going to go ahead and run through the Rikes Museum here. And the reason we're doing that is because, from an accuracy standpoint, this is no different than running through a tunnel or under a large highway overpass. So I want to see what the GPS does. It's a completely straight shot. So. There isn't any like turn here. I just want to see it connect the dots between the two sides. Okay. Now, most of these buildings are only between four and six story stall, so not super big or super tough. I don't expect to have any really tall buildings on today's run, but it's a good test nonetheless to see how they do. Be surprised if it screws up GPS these days. So distance-wise, the watches are all kind of in the same ballpark. 5.07 on the Polar Vantage, uh, 5.25 on the Apple Watch, the Garmin at 5.16, and the Samsung at 4.97. So not ideal, and if you were running something like the marathon here in a couple weeks it's five miles being almost a third of a mile off at this point isn't ideal that means you're talking uh, let's see times five again basically you're talking a crap ton uh, and that's definitely a bit of an issue but you can also be totally wrong on distance and right on track that's something we'll look at afterwards it's time to do a few sprints to test out heart rate accuracy on that so i'll put the camera down right here go down there and then come back and forth. My rough pace plan here is gonna be about five to 520 a mile. Uh, we'll see how things go. And I'm gonna do it four times down from the end of the trees down there. Should be about 20 to 30 second long intervals. Wishing that this would be over. Cold ice, the same vice. We won't be getting any closer. So the reason I do those short high intensity sprints is that 
one of the common failure points of optical heart rate is to lock on a cadence. So if you can't get your heart rate, the next biggest thumping thing is actually your feet. Uh, so it's always a great test to see how well it handles swift changes in pace, like intervals, which most runners do at some point. And so that's kind of why I tend to do those. Okay, here we are, finish things up a little bit. Uh, total distances, so the Polar Vantage V, 6.84 miles, the Garmin, 7.01, the Apple Watch, 7.08, and the Samsung, 6.55 miles. That's not awesome. We'll head on inside and talk about that awesomeness. Uh, now, a quick note on getting files off of this stuff. I've written an entire post on how to do this down in the description there. Super detailed for both iOS as well as Android, uh, because getting files off of these watches is a complete mess, uh, in particular the way it comes out of Samsung Health. Okay, we're going to start off with the heart rate side of things. I'm using the DCR analyzer. You can check it out in the description down below there if you want to create your own sets to compare stuff back and forth. You can see right away there, it took about four and a half, almost five minutes for the uh, Active 2 to actually lock my heart rate, even though it had heart rate lock before we left the run, it just lost it and then had to reacquire it or whatever the case is. That's pretty bad. There's a ton of spikes and kind of a ton of wonkiness in general until about 10 minutes in or so. And the thing stabilized for a couple minutes. Now we're on the 15 minute marker or so, all of them kind of got a bit wonky, though there are some trends in there, even if they're hard to kind of pick out of this. Uh, number one, the Apple Watch spiked up at the top because that's what the Series 5 does these days. Uh, and then below that, you see the purple and the green lines of the chest strap, and then uh, the optical heart rate sensor on my upper arm, the Polo OH1, this is pretty dependable. Uh, so my heart rate was definitely increasing there. I was probably doing a bit of a increase in pace. The Samsung watch just completely bottomed out entirely, uh, and it missed that and did some wonky stuff. But then it got back on track, and by and large, with the exception of this one drop right there, albeit a 20 beat per minute drop, uh, it was pretty good for a fair chunk of this run. Like, that's better than Samsung watches have been in the past, and so that isn't bad. Keeping in mind, in comparison to the Apple Watch, this track is horrendous, and I rated the Apple Watch as a pretty bad track uh, from a heart rate standpoint. So, eh, it is what it is. I will give credit, though, for these sprints back here, it's actually pretty darn close. All these watches did a great job of staying very, very close together, which surprised me given the intensity of these, these sprints. You can see up to almost 180 beats per minute, and then I kind of cool back down again to 160. So these are some pretty hard sprints, and it nailed this. Like there's, I have no real issues with any of these uh, particular heart rate plots from a sprint standpoint. So let's talk GPS accuracy in general. You saw the run, you saw where I ran. Nothing like crazy complex. All this was actually pretty easy from a GPS standpoint. So to begin with, things were in the river a little bit there with that red track uh, in the canal. Not horrendous though, like there are other cases where it was worse for other units. For example, here in the park, the polar was off in the trees and the, the bushes and the lakes and everything, and the rest of the units were pretty darn close, but all the other watches were within a pretty close range, though they weren't perfect. Like you'll see, I was cutting through buildings right there that I shouldn't have been. Uh, going through this section here, so that the middle of the building itself, let's see if I can zoom in a bit more right there, uh, you'll see that they got that correct, uh, the polar didn't, of course. And then the Samsung was plotted its next point off the side over here, which means that it guessed for a bit and it guessed wrong. That's not a horrendous example of that, but uh, it's not ideal. The polar is obviously is a worse example of that. You can see that the Samsung then struggled going across this section here. Didn't really seem to have good GPS lock and just sort of guesstimated. Uh, and in fact, all these units actually struggled a little bit in this section right here. The Apple went ahead and over smoothed it, so it looks prettier, but it's not actually any more correct than the others. Uh, the Garmin 945 was also having some struggles in here as well, going around the stadium, no major issues. Here though, the sprints back and forth, this is where you can see that red track of the Samsung off in the grass, uh, where the rest of the units are actually pretty darn close in that same spot every single time. So, so from a first workout standpoint, I would say it's kind of like, eh, so-so. It's basically the same as the Active One. Uh, and some of my bike commuting workouts I've done in the last two days here, not workouts, just bike commuting, uh, the GPS has been roughly what I'm seeing here as well, which is kind of like, eh, it's not great, but it's not horrible. It's like barely acceptable. So there you go, a complete look at stuff. Hopefully you found this interesting or something or whatever the case is. If so, go ahead and whack that subscribe button for plenty more sports technology goodness. There's a lot more wearable stuff to come up uh, this fall as I kind of clear through some of the backlog and things that need to be reviewed and other sports technology stuff that uh, should be arriving on your doorstep, your digital doorstep soon. Have a good one.